the wind tier list. Okay, so a lot. I wanted to talk about this as well. So um, about print one, right? You know, we've had all kinds of opinions by now, right? Like, you know, how how much better is Akron than everyone else? Should there be other tiers? Is Jingyuan Sila compared to any of these three? Uh, well, I, like, is anyone in S tier compared to these three? Like, you know, that's kind of crazy. Um, I see Galaga moved up. That's good. Well, actually, I don't know if that's good or not. One thing that I want to talk about. So this all is good. I don't know about Boho. I don't care. So, I mean, let's just do, like, all the normal views. Or right? start from right to left. And I guess I'll move this here as well. This hit over here. Cool. So, ho ho. I don't know. I don't have her. So, too bad. Um, low chat. Cool. That's fine. I do agree with this. Um, again, everyone's saying that ho ho should be S plus with Fushuan. But the problem is that I know that, like, it may seem like with ho ho, you can't die. But I feel like with Ho Ho you can die. Again, I don't have her, so I don't know. But I feel like with Ho Ho you can die. But with Fushuan you literally cannot die. Like, there's no way. Other than Golden Gears and uh, Storm Universe. But even for those mod game modes, none of these three are the sustains that you want. The sustains that you want for Golden Gears and Storm is going to be Jepard. Well, in my opinion. Because uh, shields are just OP. Uh, if you can buff them up. But yeah. And the healing does, it's not like enough healing, right? But yeah, anyway, but for MOC, because this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about MOC. Fushuan is better than Ho Ho, because you literally cannot die with Fushuan. And also, like, she, Ho Ho is a battery, but then Fushuan gives you the crit rate, which for now, right, we have characters like Acheron, which don't use energy, so she doesn't care about that. But again, we've seen like the tournament, you know, like she buffs the other people that can buff Acheron with more debuffs and stuff, blah, blah, but I don't know, but yeah, cool, well, again, I don't want to talk about this much, because, I mean, they're all OP, to be honest, um, but what I want to talk about is this, right here, Bailu and Jepard, now, Jepard, he should be moved up, all you need is 4k HP, 3k defense, and play him with Akron, because Akron is on the banner right now, right, so everyone's gonna have her, who's like probably watching this video right now but yeah, with Jepard now that Acheron is out and everyone who's watching this at, the, at this time will have Acheron right if you Jepard with that light cone I'll put it on the screen so you guys know what I'm talking about the Topaz light cone preservation and you know two other deep buffers Acheron is going to pop off and your team is not going to die so that's all I have to say really that's kind of like the only combo right now otherwise Jepard is just like fine um, you know he's going to make your team survive but the thing is, he will run out of sustain. Because when bosses are going to do their big bursts, Jepard is not able to keep up. Where this other controversial take is going to come in, where Bailu comes in. So for burst damage, Bailu uh, gives you 10% damage reduction with Invigoration. And the Invigoration itself gives you so much HP, right? Because let's be honest, if you're like maxed out, you're not going to get one shot. I don't think like you can get one shot in this game. Um, so Bailu is going to make sure that one, you're not going to get one shotted, which I think it's impossible anyway, and two, uh, just heal you back up without having to do anything. Um, her ulti is like super low cooldown. Uh, and another thing that's really great, her numbers are really high, like she heals a lot. So why have her? I have her with the Lycon that gives energy. I'll post it on screen here the four star free one from the MOC shop at S5. And she just batteries everyone else. So I can kill faster, basically. Uh, and she does that while keeping everyone alive. Now, obviously, there are issues, right? No so, no cleanse. So, you know, against Kafka. I remember the first MOC when we changed to 12 floors. The last floor was Kafka. And for that side with Kafka, I have had to use Bailu. So I had to get lucky. Which, yeah, sucks. I've had to restart a couple of times. But, like... Okay, oh, it honestly wasn't that bad because like Kafka or Sampo or something was getting stun locked by Kafka. Um, imprisoned. No. What do you call her thing? D. I don't know, D. 
bro, what do you call that when someone does something to you? Dominated. That's what it is. But yeah, when Kafka is gonna dominate someone, then I would have usually lost. But to be honest, that's the only time that I've had that. And at the time, my account wasn't the best because I didn't have wind and or imaginary. So my problem was my DPS. I wasn't passing the DPS check. But surviving, that's fine. Which is what Bailu does. Which I don't think she should be at B or MOC. I legit think Bailu. Because I said that Fushuan, you can't die, right? I legit think the same thing about Bailu. If you have Bailu, you, your team isn't dying. You, If you die, then there's something wrong. And the thing is, again, like, because Invigoration gives you health, and uh, you run her with ER up, so she gets, like, a lot of energy, she will get back up the ulti fast enough for you to restart the Invigoration. Like, you're probably gonna go through, like, one, like, one action of a character without Invigoration, let's say, right? But, like, that's fine. You're not gonna die in that one action. So, yeah. You just need to make her fast, you know, as fast as you can as for any healer. Give her as much HP as you can. Uh, and the factor is if you're running Broken Kill. But if not, then you go fleet less and that's it. Because on these, like, HP, HP scaling system, I do like to run fleetless because it gives you the more HP, right? So, more HP, bigger number. And I don't run, I don't tend to run by with crit DPSs. I run with like dots because I run Fushuan with crit DPSs for the crit rate. So yeah, so that's my hot take, I guess. These two need to get moved out to A. And I don't know what these two do. Well, I know what Lynx does. Lynx is like really good. But the thing is, her healing sometimes feels kind of bad. Like she doesn't heal up to max. Um... And this is like, okay, this is where I'm going to make the counter that Lynx should be under Bailu. So Lynx should be at B, right? So her healing feels worse. Yeah, she has the cleanse, which is really nice. But the thing is like, to be honest, for me, I haven't found that many uses. I don't feel like there's that many cases in this game where you need to cleanse. So I don't feel like it's that much of a priority or a necessity, really. But yeah, Lynx should be under Bailu. Because with Lynx, you can do the cleanse. But in my opinion, you're not going to survive for as long as if you had Bailu. So, yeah, just like her numbers feel bad. That's about it. And it's also, Bailu feels good while she has that light on that gives energy to everyone else. Lynx, you're gonna have to run with like Natasha's light or something. So you can get as much healing as possible. So, yeah, I don't know. And then these two at the bottom, sure, they're fine. March is a single target shielder with higher taunt, which, okay. Sure. And then Natasha, her number is just really low, unfortunately. Her ult is on a really fast, uh, like, rotation, because she has, like, low energy needs. Uh, like, she doesn't need a lot of energy for her ulti, but yeah, her numbers are just really low, so she doesn't heal enough. Basically, you're gonna die if you use Natasha at some point. Um, cool, up here, everything is good. I don't know about Silver Wolf. I don't know about Pale Lamb. Because if we with Pela, you can use her more teams than Silverwolf. And for example, if you think of the S plus DPSs, Acheron and Jinglu, they want uh, Pela. So, and none of these three necessarily want Silverwolf. You know what I mean? So yeah, because Silverwolf is single target, and Acheron is AOE, so she takes more of an advantage of the AOE debuff instead of just the single target a a debuff, right? So, I honestly feel like this should be swapped. Uh, there was like some comments that said they should be wherever Silver Wolf is, Pella should be, and vice versa. Nah, Pella is better than Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf should be here. And then. And my other hot take, I think, yeah, this is fine. They're all of them really OP. But Ron May, you know, we just put Ron May in S, plus and move Sparkle down as well. Because I feel like if Sparkle. Like Sparkle and Bronya, they're like so close. Like, in terms of the buffs, right, in my opinion, they feel the same. The only thing that Sparkle does is, like, the thing with the skill points, which makes the game easier to play, in my opinion. Um, I could obviously, like, she gives a lot more crit damage. But, like, Bronya can boost you enough to do the same shit, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, but, yeah, Silver Wolf to A, I pay up to... Definitely. 
And another hot take is I was really surprised by in the tournament by Hanya. You Hanya is like a really like skill um expressive unit. So like you could really know need to know what to do. Um like how to play her and who to play her and like you know probably even have like good gears because she needs like a like 200 speed or something right to be like become good uh, which i mean it's not that hard to be honest on hanya uh, i think i'm getting like 180 speed on my account with hanya something like that uh but yeah she's fine there because again she's not you have better options basically in terms of the skill points efficiency and the amount of damage buff that she gives you like i mean they're just thinking right she does both better uh the new kong again really skill expressive uh hard to use if and hard to get because you need our e6 so you haven't been playing since 1.1 when she came on the first banner for locha then and you're not well then kind of hard they're gonna have e6 right so this character is just like unfortunately gonna be forgotten for most players but what can you do? It's unfortunate because like it's Yu Kong. I don't really like her, but there you go. Now my hot take in the amplifier list is gonna be Asta. Asta needs to move up to A. She just does way too much. That everyone needs. You know, she's a speed manipulator. She doesn't manipulate advance forward, but she gives 50 speed, which is the same thing. And you know, her attack buff is nothing to scoff at. And it's also you can use it with Acheron. So if you're a new player. And you get Asta given for free, and then you get some Eidolons for Asta, you know, by being lucky, then she will put on burn debuff, right? She's like scales with Acheron, which basically equals that you win the game. That is, in fact, to see, I think I used her in pure fiction in the latest one. Uh, I used Asta with Acheron and the Dot team, so yeah, she's really good. Uh, skill point efficient, fast. Makes everyone else faster. So yeah, it's all good. They also uh, synergize the with Acheron and the Dot team. So Acheron Kafka blocks one. Because everything that she does, everyone takes advantage of that. If you were to use Bronya with Acheron Kafka blocks one, only Acheron would take advantage of Bronya. If you were to use Sparkle, only Acheron Kafka blocks one. No. Yeah, Sparkle, only Acheron would take advantage of it. So. Yeah. Run me. She's just like the better Asta. Way better. But yeah, Asta is really good. Use her if you have her. Cool, then here in the specialist. Um, Black Swan needs to be in S+. Uh, Black Swan has many independent teams from Kafka. So I don't think this like linked icon is necessarily accurate. Uh, Black Swan, Sample. I've shown it off in a video. Really good. Does a fuck ton of damage. Like just Black Swan and Acheron and two other debuffers. Yeah, because that's also the issue, right? So, Kafka, when was Kafka, was Kafka 1.6? So there is potentially players that were caught on with the hype of 2.0 that were able to pull for her, right? So they will have Kafka on their account, which then you pull Black Swan and then you win the game. But they say that you started at 2.0, so you missed that Kafka banner. Wait, was Kafka 1.6? I don't remember. But if you miss Kafka in general anyway, then pulling Black Swan is still good. Because you will get Sample, you will get Acheron now, so you do have some choices. You do have teams that do as much damage as a Kafka enabler team does. So, Topaz, I don't know, man. Topaz is kind of a weird one. It's like, the only issue that I have is just single target. I hate single target so much. I hate like having to take care of every like small mob one by one. So for me, just kind of, she is that strong. I do believe that. I've seen the damage numbers. And my Topaz does a bunch of damage. So I would believe it. You know, she buffs other follow-up characters. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's just a single target. It just feels bad. Um, Luca, yeah, break effect Luca. Amazing does. Like, if you break effect with Luca, he can do like 150k damage. Uh, Sampo, yeah, really good. Again, he's linked to Kafka and Black Swan. Well, in this case, it's probably like mentioned that she should be linked with Kafka. But no, Black Swan sample, legit team comp. Try it. L look at my video, my MOC video. So yeah. Joyi, don't know. Probably good. I've seen her in a tournament before. And she looked OP. So. Uh, Gunaifen, kind of sad. Honestly, a B tier. 
Like, what does she not do that Sampo and Luca does? And then again, we have to think about the MOC, right? This current MOC. I don't think there's anyone weak to fire. So, okay, in that case, I guess, yeah. But yeah, otherwise, good friends on the same power level as all three of these. I don't see why not. Then we have Weld. I don't know, it does feel kind of bad. And like, all of this, like, thing about Weld sustain is just cope. Like, just relax. Like, you can definitely find other ways, other characters to play. Uh, just play Weld Hyper Carry if you want, but don't play him sustain. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> cool. That's Shushang. I don't know, but Break Effect Shushang is good. Uh, definitely. And Fire Trailblazer. The thing is, he has the Break Effect sign next to it. So, Break Effect Fire Trailblazer. Okay, really good. If you're on a pure fiction. Well, again, we're not talking about pure fiction. We're talking about MOC. Okay, yeah, deserved. Sure. Uh, MOC, they less useful. That's for sure. And they definitely don't sustain anywhere close to anyone else. I would say they still sustain more than Weld. <laughs> sure. Not sustain. It's a funny one. Then damage dealers. This is where we get into the nerdy stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Um, Acheron, better than IL and Jingliu. Honestly, I've tried to use my Jingliu recently. It just feels bad. <laughs> That's wow. Like, why she's like so much worse than Acura? It's crazy. But yeah, anyway, IL, I don't know, because I don't have him and I don't really like him either. But, so the thing is, right, you will clear and potentially zero cycle with these three characters, right? Which makes them deserving of S+. Now, it's easier to deal with Acheron than IL or Jingli Yu, but everyone else can still do it. So... I would agree with that, but I also agree with Acheron is to be in another tier, like Omega tier. So... Yep. Then we have S tier. I don't know if I'm like smoking something, but I've tried to use Jingyu and I just can't, man. I don't know if it's just like me getting used to Acheron damage, but like... Jingyu just feels bad, I don't know if he's that strong. And then like also the like... The placements for these characters, there's like... A thing that says they've been placed here because... Based on their most optimal team comp. So like what's, what's that for Jingyu on? Is it Ron May Sparkle Ting Yun? Is it Ron May Sparkle Topaz? Like, I don't know, man. Like, he can't definitely zero cycle, I've seen it. But he's just so hard to build. He's definitely not easy to use. Like, your supports need to have a lot of speed. You just basically need to boost Jing Yuan over and over again. Oh shit. Uh, over and over again, so he can keep getting up to 10 stacks. To make sure that the Lightning Lord moves as fast as possible. So then when he goes, then you're able to go again. And then the Lightning Lord goes twice. And then you just win. So once on the first wave, you kill everyone. And then another time on the first, on the second wave, you kill everyone. But like, that's just so hard to do, in my opinion. Like, it is possible, but like, I don't know. Man. Sila, I don't know, bro. She just feels bad. Like, in single target. Uh, she doesn't kill anyone. Or my one doesn't anyway. And like... I have like 7140. I think, or like 60 something, 68 or some bullshit like that. Like and all the correct like four piece quantum and two piece rutilant. So I don't know what else I need to do. Uh Doctor Ratio. Yeah, it can definitely beat the game. It's just like single target and again feels bad. Um Cause it's where one of these like explanations like ease of use. Like you can't tell me Doctor Ratio Sila and Topaz, they're easy to use. Ain't no way. Like, in order to get these tier damage and like outcome, you need to get lucky in investment. Like, it's just that easy. The, thing, the only thing why I left out Jingyuan and QQ is because they're like AoE and burst. So, they do have that going for them. I don't know who I would move down. It's technically... I don't think, to be honest, I think Blade should be the only S tier. And then all of these four, they need to move down to A with Clara. I don't know how Blade is here. Like, like he's easier to build. He's HP scaling that DPS and crit, obviously. But the thing is, you have 
and also i don't remember but i think the calculations were that the hp and attack stats they were like close enough where it doesn't really make a difference to his damage so the thing is there you have two choices now when you farm you can either raise your hp with double crit or your attack piece with double crit which it's just like go tier that's like perfect it's like so easy okay you still have to hit the double crit but like easier to build anyway and he, he's also wants the hp set which is in the speed set cavern so like you're getting like a free if you have blade then you're gonna be farming the speed set because you want it and you're gonna get those hp pieces which fushuan and blade want so like, how easy is that like you're gonna get lucky at some point um clara yeah wait here agree that's fine. Argenti, I don't know. What I've seen, I've always seen like half of videos of him. But maybe it was because like all the ways pulled and all the free to plays just skipped. <laughs> so I haven't seen like a real relatable Argenti. Uh, so maybe he's that bad. And then Serval, yeah, you are. That's fine. She's definitely better than everyone else. Just because she can spam the ulti. Like her numbers are actually pretty good. Yeah, I agree with all of this. With the rest. I don't know about Yangqing, I wouldn't, he was my first 5 star and I haven't used him in a while. I've tried to clear on MOC with him because I was uh, struggling and panicking and trying to figure something out but I couldn't. Everything else I agree with. Again, like I want to raise up all of these units and see how good they are as well myself. So that's what I'm planning to do. Currently, I still need to raise who? Zhuo Yi, I need Su Xiang. Hook, Misha, Arlan, and March. So I don't have any characters left until I can start using them and testing them out. Otherwise, yeah, I just feel like... Okay, now I want to take the perspective of a new player that's signed 2.0, right? Because that's like... Who will go to these places? Because like all players, they know what the fuck they're doing. Like I haven't looked at the, the tier list in like... Since 1.1. I'm joking. I'm probably... I don't know. Maybe like until 2.0. Uh, until... Because that's kind of like when the game became easy for me, like around 1.16.0. Uh, so for a while, I was struggling. And the thing is, new players are starting 2.0 because of the hype. They're still struggling. So they look at this and they're thinking like, Oh my god, my account is dog shit. Because my Asta is all the way down here. My Pela is all the way down here. Uh, my Bailu that I got when I was a 50-50 is all the way down here. My Jepard I got is all the way down here. No, you can't beat the game with these characters. It's just... Tier lists maybe are just wrong in my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, like I know that they're basing this off real information, so it's not like they're lying. From my experience, I don't know. Some of these things are kind of like either cope or yeah, either cope or no, just cope. Honestly, like. And to be honest with this, with this B rank, Bailu and Jupard, there may be some like misconception because everyone like thinks negatively of them. So maybe these guys thought, oh, they, they're bad because everyone says they're bad. So they should be bad. But nah, I don't know. Again, I don't want to say that because I don't think that because uh, I do trust these guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, to be honest, in my opinion, the only misinformation is kind of just this. Everyone here, these four people should go down to A with Clara and then Blade should move up to us. I don't believe Blade does less damage than Sila or QQ in an MOC scenario. There's no fucking way. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, that's about it. But yeah, hope that helps. Again, if you're like a new player, just get Acheron, Pela, Asta. Make sure to get the burn uh, trace, the one that starts burning people. And, um, think you if you get lucky. Or if you lose a 50-50, like, Jepard with his light cone. Or even, like, Trailblazer with his light cone. But then again, if you're a new player, don't expect that you're gonna beat the game. The first time I beat MOC 10, because back then it was still MOC 10, it was in 1.4, maybe, I think. And back then, we didn't have as many resources. We, you know, we're struggling, all of that. Um, now, there are more resources because you can do the previous events. 
So you can, you know, get the characters that you want. You can even potentially pull for the Lycon, which for Acheron, you maybe should, because that's kind of OP that from the skills you get six stacks. Um, I'm not going to talk about Lycons, because if you don't want it, don't want it. If you like it, you like it. I mean, I'm just pulling that for the art. I got the art, the Kafka, Black Swan, and Acheron. Lycons. So for Black Swan and Acheron, I just got it because of the art. And then for Kafka, it's just because it's Kafka. So I just need to support that banner. But yeah. Um, yeah, don't expect to be the game. You're not. Uh, you know, it's what's called end game. You know, you need to be level 70, be in the caverns for a while, uh, you know, get lucky, which happens sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Just have fun with the game. Do the story, read the lore. And you're going to finish the end game when you're going to finish it. Because trust me, you're not running out of resources. You have all of those events to do. I know you have none of those events. Do them. What are you doing? They're so good. Do the ghost hunting one. I know you haven't done that one. That's about it.